Welcome back. This is tutorial number 60. It's an exercise lesson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be creating a simple mechanical part. Let's begin by creating some layers. Let's launch the Layers Properties panel. The first layer is going to be the Part layer. Let's create another layer. This I'm going to call Hidden Lines. and another layer. Let's call it center lines. And one more layer. It'll be the dimension layer. Now let's change the colors of the layers. I'll make this one red, OK. By the way, it is perfectly OK to use the same line color for all or some of your layers but it's a good idea to separate your entities across the layers. Keep different types of entities on different layers. Let's go to the center line layer. Let's make it cyan. The hidden lines layer I'll make yellow. Now let's modify the line type. Load. I'll use center and scroll down, hold down the control key, and let's select hidden as well. OK. Center. OK. Oops, that was the hidden lines layer. Let's change it. And center line here, OK. And let's close the layers properties panel. Now I'm going to place some rectangles to create my part geometry. This might not be the most efficient way to get this done, but for the purposes of this exercise, let's give it a shot. 5 and 5 is my first corner. For the second corner, 20 and 10. Press Enter. Let's place another rectangle. The snap switch is toggled on. I'm going to snap to this corner. Let's place it at 45 degrees. We're going to right-click and scroll to Rotation. Enter 45 and press Enter. Now let's specify some dimensions. Right-click, scroll to Dimensions. The length will be 10 units. Enter. The width, 5 units, and press Enter again. And lastly, we place our rectangle with a left-click. Next, let's use the Arc tool. I'll activate the Start and Angle method. Let's place the first point. Snap to this endpoint for my second point and the angle. Let's enter 180 degrees. Enter. Now another arc. I'm going to use the start, end, and radius method. Let's snap to this point as my first point. Snap here as my second point. And let's specify the radius now. Now let's activate the trim tool. Press Enter to select All. And let's make a window selection, right to left. Right-click and Enter to close the tool. As you probably noticed by now, I created my geometry on the wrong layer. Let's practice moving our geometry from one layer to another. I select it, and now I select the correct layer from this drop-down menu. OK, let's create some hidden lines. Let's go to the Hidden Lines layer. Activate the Line tool. Let's switch Ortho mode on. It's going to be 5 units and press Enter. Press Escape to exit the Line tool. Now let's activate the Offset command. The distance will be 1 unit. Press Enter. Our first offset and our second offset. Press Escape to exit the tool. Let's activate the Circle command. Snap to this endpoint. And again. Press the Space bar to activate the Circle command again. Snap to endpoint and again. Press the Space bar to activate the tool again. Let's hold down the Shift key. Right click. And let me try this again actually. Shift and right click and select mid between two points. Here's my first point, 
And here's my second point. The radius will be one unit, enter. And let's create our last circle. Radius one unit, enter. Now let's create center lines. Let's activate the line command and right click, activate snap to quadrant and make our selections. Escape to exit the tool. Let's select and delete this line. As you see, the center line's actually a bit short. Let's use the scale command. Right click to finish the selection. Now we choose a base point and left click. Now let's use the copy command. Select the object to copy. Right click to finish the selection. Now select a base point and let's place it here. Escape to close the tool. Let's activate the copy command again. Select this line. Right click, base point. And escape to exit the tool. Let's activate the trim command. Press enter to trim everything by everything else. And press escape when you're done. Now, as you see, I already have a line here which I can use as a center line. I just need to extend it to move it to the correct layer. Let's use the Match tool, select the object, right click to finish the selection, and let's place the line on the correct layer. Let's try the Scale command now. Select the line, right click to finish the selection. Now we need to select a base point and left click. Okay, as you see, my line is a little bit short. Undo, we're going to try it again. Activate the scale command. Select the line. Right click to finish the selection. Now select the base point, snap here. Let's turn snap mode off. Okay, and we're ready to apply some dimensions. Let's go to the dimension layer. Let's start with a radial dimension. Place our first dimension out here and press the spacebar to activate the radial dimension tool again. Let's place the second dimension here and let's open the dimension style manager so I can change the text size. Click modify, go to the text tab and under text height, let's change the value. Let's make it 0.5, okay and close. Now let's activate the linear dimension type. Snap to center, snap to center again, place it about here, and snap to center again, and there too, place it about here. One more linear dimension, snap to center, snap to endpoint, and place it down here. Let's place an angular dimension next. First line, second line, and let's place our angular dimension about here. Lastly, I'm going to use the align dimension type. Snap to center, snap to center again. Orthor mode is off, make sure you do that. And let's place it about here. Let's rotate the text for this dimension. Let's go to properties. Under the text tab, let's click on text rotation. Now here I know the value of the rotation, it's 45 degrees. If you don't know, you can use the quick calculator. Here's the option, angle divided by two points, the first point, second point, and click apply. And as you see, a 45 degree angle was applied here. And this concludes our exercise tutorial.